Today we will take a look at our last chapter and our last chapter is querying a database and it is access chapter two. If you would join me in that reddish orange section of your textbook and flip over to page AC 66. And while you're doing that, I'm going to open up my Pratt last file, that project that we created together in chapter one of access. So if you would open that up and that's the database that we're going to create today as we work through this chapter. All three of the databases that you have created so far we will use in this chapter. And we'll just build off of those as we get deeper into running numerous queries. If you look at page AC66 in your textbook, this little figure is showing that the database is like the central piece and lots of people are using it. So. Lots of people throughout a company or an organization might be sharing that and they're all posing different questions and looking for different things to help them with their job. On campus, we have a database that you guys are all in and it's called SAIL. And that is a place that you can go if you want to pull up your transcript, see what your schedule is, see how much you owe for a bill. There are just numerous things that you can use. And you might need to pull up the data. The registrar's office might need to pull up some data. A teacher, your advisor, all of us might need to search that database and pull up a record. So that's what we're going to take a look at in this chapter, running numerous queries on our Pratt Last database. Well, in the last chapter, we set up a couple simple queries. We have a couple of those sitting here in our navigation pane and we're going to get deeper into those we're going to set up about 20 different queries and some will be very easy and then some of them get a little bit deeper so let's go up to the create tab that's where we've gone so far to create everything we've created a table here we've created a query here we use the wizard and we have created a report and we use the wizard so in this chapter, we're going to go to create and we're going to go to the queries group, but we're going to go into query design. Now to start with, we are going to work with the account table. <clears throat> so if you can select the account table and add, <clears throat> and then you can just close out of the show table area. So this is what design view looks like as you're setting up queries. We've been into design view of a table and we looked at design view of a query briefly. We ran one query in chapter one. So we haven't gotten real deep into that yet. Now, if you wanted to go over to Blackboard and open up your access chapter two assignments, there is a great little handout that I've created for you that would be good to have in front of you as you're working through these projects. You might print that out even and have that laying in front of you. I give you some little notes and some helpful guides and that might be a benefit to you. So if you want to pause me and, and go open that up or print that out, go for it. So our very first query that we're going to set up, they would like us to include the account number, account name, amount paid, and current due. Now there are numerous ways to move those fields from the upper pane, this is called the upper pane, and this is your little table, to the lower pane. Sometimes I like to stretch out this table to let me so I can see all of my fields. So I would like account number, account name, amount paid, and current due. So one way to move fields from the upper pane to the lower pane is just to double click those in the upper pane. Now in this very first one, if you flip over in your textbook, all the answers to all these queries after you set these up are in the textbook. So we are specifically looking for one record here and we would like to pull up account number JM323. So if I know exactly what I'm looking for, I'm going to go to my account number field. Underneath it, I'll go to criteria and I will type in my JM323. That's it. I have my criteria typed in. I go up to my ribbon and I hit run. 
and this is my result. This is what it should look like. And we can check our answer in the textbook and it should match the same as on page 70 or 71. I think it may show it both places in your textbook. Now our procedure will be to go up to save as and we've got to name a number every single one of these queries. So we're going to call this Pratt class your name and then we're going to call it query 01. And that will be saved over here in your navigation pane. And we named the, the queries a little different in chapter one, so we'll know the ones in chapter two are all going to be called Pratt Last. That is your first one. And we are ready to go back to design view. Here we are again, and we'll set up our second query. The second query is over on page 73. If you want to flip over and take a look at that. We are totally done with our criteria from number one. So let's delete that JM23 down in the criteria area. And in this example, I would like to use a wild card. You might use a wild card if you're kind of unsure of what you're looking for. Um, perhaps I'm looking for somebody's name and I'm unsure of a spelling. Maybe I know part of their account number, but not the entire thing. I might use a wild card. So there are two wild card characters available for us in access. If you're unsure or missing several characters, you'll use your little asterisk or that little star. If you're missing one character or unsure of one character, you'll use the question mark. So in this example, we want to pull up all of our account names. So make sure you get underneath the account name field. Our account names start with K. And I am not sure or I don't care the characters that follow. So I'll use my asterisk. And we'll go up and hit run. And hopefully that should pull up two clients. Key Community College and KAL Vet Services. They both start with K. It does not matter the order if these are reversed. I think in the textbook they're flipped over in a different order. So that pulled up the two account names that we were looking for. So the wildcard is a good tool and a handy tool to use if you're unsure of some data that you're looking for. All right, our procedure again, we'll just go up to save as, get rid of the word copy of, and we'll just change this to query two. So it's not hard. You just have to decide what you're looking for and make sure you're typing your criteria underneath the right field. Let's go to design view and let's get rid of our criteria. We're done with that one. And let's look at number three. And number three is over on page 74 and 75. And on this one, we're going to use criteria for a field that's not included in the result. So what we would like to do here is we would like to add one more field. So we're leaving account number, account name, amount paid, current due, and they would like us to pull up the city field. So we double click to move fields from the upper pane to the lower pane. You can also do this. You can just go straight to the lower pane and get the drop down and choose your field here. So city is the field that we are looking for, and they specifically want us to pull up our clients that live in the city of Granger. So we do things like this on campus. Maybe we want to know how many students that we have that are from Trenton, or how many students are coming from Chillicothe, how many students do we have that are from Bethany, and we can do a search like this and search for your city. Now the only deal is on this one, I want to list their account number, name, amount paid, and current due. I do not really want to print out the city. So there's a little uh, row here called show, and you can decide if you want to show it or not. You know, sometimes you might have confidential information like a phone number, social security number, an address, and you don't want to show it. So in this instance, you can use that field to search, but then after you've searched, just don't show it. So let's go up and run it and let's see how many are from Granger and that should be 
you can check that on page 75, Bland Corporation, KAL, and Lancaster the Hospital. And we'll go up to Save As. And we'll get rid of Copy Of. So hopefully you're getting in a little routine. We have a few under our belt here. If you run these and you're not getting the right result, chances are you probably have a typo. And you, again, like we talked about last chapter, if you have a typo, don't try to fix it in a query or a report. Go back to the table, fix it in the table, and then every single query will be fixed. So everything is based off that original table. So fix any errors in the table. All right, we'll go back to design view. And let's get rid of Granger down here. We're done with that one. And we're looking at number four. And four is talking about creating parameters. And they taught you at the bottom of page 74, it says to enable this flexibility, you create a parameter query, which is a query that prompts for input whenever you use it. I think of a parameter query as like a generic query that I can use numerous times. So in this example, they want us to search for numerous cities. So instead of just typing in one city here, I'm going to use my straight bracket. It's just the bracket to the right of your P on your keyboard. And I'm going to type in enter city and then my straight bracket again. Now when I run that, take a look when you run, that little prompt comes up here and you can type in your city. And in this example, they want you to type in wells. But if I would have set this up last time, I could have typed in Granger and I could have typed in wells and every little city I'm looking for, I can use the same query numerous times. So this is generic enough that you can use it over and over. And we can check our result at the bottom of page 76 or top of 77. JSP Manufacturing and Mums Landscaping are both located in the city of Wells. Let's go to Save As. That is our fourth one. Let's get rid of copy of. And then we'll go back to design view. All right, we're looking at number five. And on number five, we are done working with the city field. So if you get done with a field or you're changing your mind and want to search for something else, you can hover above it and you can see that little black arrow and you can hit delete. There is a delete column tool up on your ribbon also. Just be careful when you're using that. I've had people highlight extra columns accidentally and what happens if you delete a column sometimes that will corrupt your data and you actually lose information in your table over here so i have the best luck if you just hover above use that little arrow and hit your delete key from your keyboard all right we are going to take a look at using a number for our criteria so so far pretty much been looking for text in this example, they want us to pull up all of our accounts that have a zero current due balance. So under current due, we're going to go to criteria. And the deal is here, you just type a plain old zero. You don't need a dollar sign, no decimal places or commas. Keep your search very easy. Just a plain old zero. And we'll hit run. And hopefully that pulls up one client that we work with. Key Community College, they have a zero current due balance, and you can check that at the bottom of page 78. Let's save as. Get rid of copy of. And this one was number five. Go back to design view. After a bit, you guys aren't even going to need me anymore. All right. Now, it looks like they are wanting us to change tables. So, so far you've been working with your account table. We can right click our table and remove it. And we're gonna open up the other table. A Couple different ways to open up tables. You can right click and choose show table, or you have that show table tool right here on your ribbon. Either way works. And we would like to open up the account manager table this time. So let's double click that and then close out of here. And if you want to stretch that out, you can. 
and they want us to work with account manager number. And again, you can double click or you can get the drop down. Let me show you that. Last name. And I, I'm not fond of this idea, but some people like it. You can also drag and drop. All right, I'm afraid that I'll get it dropped in the wrong spot. But it looks like they want us to pull over account manager number, last name, first name, and then start date. I'm usually a double clicker. Now we want to find our workers, our account managers that started working for us after January 1st of 2015. So there are some comparison operators that Access will understand. And they talk to you a little bit about those on top of page 79. Uh, Access will understand the greater than sign, less than sign, greater than, equal to, less than or equal to, and they, it will also understand the word not. All right, so if they started working after, greater than, after, one slash 01 slash 2015. So we need to kind of type it in that format because that is the format that we typed it in when we set up our table. And we'll run it. And let's see how many workers started working for us after. So it looks like we have Peter and Karen. They both started after January 1st. And you can check that on top of page 80. Again, if you are not getting the right results, go over and check your account manager table and the account table just to see if you have any typos. Fix those in your table. And then you will be ready to go back and run your query. All right, we'll save that one. Now it is number six. And we'll go back to design view for number seven. On seven, we are working with our other tables. So they're going to have you jump around and go from table to table. So both tables can be on your screen. I feel like it's a little confusing for students. So I'm not going to have them both up there quite yet until I need them. So I'm going to practice removing the table and showing my account table again. All right, we are going to, on this one, we're going to use a compound criteria. So, so far we just looked for one bit of criteria at a time. In this example, we're going to look for a couple things. They want us to pull up those clients or customers that have a current due balance greater than 2,500, and they also belong to account manager 31. So we have two bits of criteria that we want to look for. Let's look for our account number, account name. We want amount paid. We are looking for current due and account manager. So pull over those five and then type our criteria in. We said current due greater than 2,500, keeping that very simple. No dollar sign, no comma, no decimal and we're looking for account manager number 31. So everything gets typed in on the criteria line, both bits of criteria. So before Access pulls up any record for us, it must meet both of those bits of criteria. And then we run it. And we can check that result. Um, the example of how to set that up is on page 81, as well as the result. We should have Avondale Community Bank, Midwest Library Consortium, and Tri-County Waste Disposal. They both have our amount paid, or I'm sorry, our current due balance above 2,500, and they belong to Account Manager 31. So you can look for more than one bit of criteria. Let's save it. We'll get rid of copy of. That is query seven, and we'll OK it. Go back to design view. And this next one, number eight, is very similar. There's one word that's different. So read your queries very carefully as you're setting these up. The word and means everything's on the criteria line. So the one that we just did was an and. 
This one is an or. We're looking for current due balance of 20, greater than 2,500 or they belong to account manager 31. And it does not matter which one of these bits of criteria you move down, but notice you do have a little or line. It's the bottom line over under criteria. Move one of those bits of criteria to the or line. And again, it does not matter which one. And you run it. And that really changes your result. So make sure you read those carefully. Um, when you check your answer, that is over on page 82. And it should show you 11 results. You can see that at the bottom of your page. Avondale Community Bank should be the top one. And Tri-County Waste Disposal should be at the tail end. And that one is number eight. And we'll OK it. We'll go back to design view. And we are ready for number nine. Now, so far, we haven't really cared about the order that things are coming over. But this next one, we do. We care exactly about the order. So they talk to you about sorting on page 83. Okay, a minute. They actually want us to clear out the entire design grid. So if you go to the lower grid, again, hover above the column, and you can delete those columns. You actually can delete several of those at once if you want to. If you wanted to highlight both of those, you can, or you can delete one at a time. Clear out your design grid. And on this one, they are wanting us to search for one thing. I would really like to have a list of all the cities that our account managers reach. So I'm going to hit city and then just run it. And this gives me an entire list in no particular order. They are not sorted, so it would be kind of nice if these were alphabetized. And if you notice by glancing, you have some repeats in your list. So we're going to clean this list up a little bit. Let's go back to design view. To sort, if you go to your lower design grid, you can see the word sort, get the drop down in sort, and you can place those in ascending alphabetical order or descending order. So we'll place those in ascending order. And then we would like to get rid of duplicates. So to get rid of duplicates, there's a little property sheet up on your ribbon. You can open that up. You can also right click in the upper pane and there's a property sheet. Same idea. The tool looks exactly the same. Either place works. The only deal is there, there are several property sheets and I have no idea what property she is open, opening up for you. So if you left click in this upper pane, you can kind of see where I'm at. Left click that should take you to the correct property sheet. And you're looking for unique values. So again, if you have the wrong property sheet open, left click up here in the upper pane, check out unique values, and we want to yes to unique values. So by default, it is set for no. Unique values set for yes. You might highlight that on your review sheet, uh, put a note of it in your book because unique values and unique records are there together. Sometimes students get those confused. So unique values is what you're looking for and we'll run it. So the purpose of property sheet is to get rid of duplicates. If you ever run a query and you're getting duplicates and you want to eliminate those, open up that property sheet. So this should be in correct order and it should take us from um, Avondale down to Wells. That is our nice list of cities. And you can check that over on page AC86. So two things there. We sorted. We got rid of duplicates. And that is number nine. We'll save it. And we'll go back to design view. And let's close the property sheet just so you don't have extra things to look at on your screen. Let's hover above the city field and delete the city field. Done with that one. And we are going to set up number 10. We're going to sort multiple things. So we would like to sort a couple different things. So we're going to open up and add our account number. 
we have account name. We have our account manager number and we have amount paid. So four fields that we've added and you can look at the bottom of page 86 and check that out. Okay, we're sorting more than one thing. So we're gonna sort the account manager number in ascending order and we're gonna sort amount paid in ascending order. Now, when you sort a couple things, a primary sort and a secondary sort, and you'll want to read about that in your textbook. They talk to you about that. So the most important sort is placed first in the design grid. So let's run it. It makes more sense when you run it. So access reads left to right. I'm going to place all my account numbers first, then my, my account names. Oh, you want to sort account manager number. So I'm going to sort this first. Okay, I'm going to put these in ascending order. So I'm going to put all the 31s together, all the 35s together, and all the 58s together. Those are sorted first. Oh, you want another sort. You're also wanting to sort amount paid. So I need to keep the 31s together. I'm going to go from lowest to highest in my 31s and the 35s from lowest to highest, and in the 58s from lowest to highest. So as you look at your account names, you might think, ooh, this doesn't look sorted. Make sure fields are supposed to be sorted, and it happens to be these last two fields, and you can kind of see how that's set up. So you could check that to make sure it's looking exactly like the textbook over on page 87, but your very first account should be Key Community College and it should take you down to Lancaster County Hospital. And that is a multiple sort. The most important sort field is placed first in the design grid called the primary sort, followed by the secondary sort. We'll save as. And that is number 10. You are halfway done. There are a bunch of these, they're not hard. It's a little time consuming and we'll go back to view and we'll be ready for the next one. All right, by default, we have been running all records that match our criteria. As you look at your ribbon, there's a little tool called return. That is also known as the top values box. We can set that up for a number or a percent by default, it is set for all. The only problem is after you change that to a number or a percent, it hangs on to whatever you change it to. So I wanna give you an example of when you might adjust this number. Maybe I have all of my high school graduates and their GPAs in a database, and it's time for graduation. I'm looking for the top 10% of the class. Here you go, I can adjust it right here. I can look for the top 10. I could look for the top two if I wanted to know the valedictorian and the salutatorian. I want to look at my top five salespeople for the week. So you can adjust this return box. And that's what they're wanting us to do here. We're going to look for, or just pull up the top five records. And there are just a few numbers and percents here, but you can type any number or percent here. So we're going to use five and we're going to run it. And same result, this just happened to show me all of my 31s. I could see how my 31s, account manager 31s doing. And that is shown on page 88 in your textbook. And we'll save it. And that's number 11. So after you use that top values box, make sure you take it back to all. So let's go back to design view. Oops and take it immediately back to all because you don't want to set up a bunch of queries and have that stuck on maybe a five and then you're not getting all the results that you should be. All right, we are going to take a look at joining both tables. So I'm going to have just delete, clear out your design grid at the bottom, Let's highlight those and get rid of those. And let's show our other table. So we have the account table open right now. Let's go up and open up our account manager table. We're gonna have both tables on here at the same time. I wanna show you this. Sometimes students, there's a, screw, a little scroll bar here in the middle of your screen. And sometimes our tables get away from us. 
and you get a lot of results. And if you get a lot of results when you're running a query, make sure that you're clear over to the far left. So sometimes students think, oh, both tables were there. They just disappeared. I'm going to add them again. And you really have tables over to the left. So watch that scroll bar to make sure things don't get away from you. All right, we are going to work with a few fields from both tables. So we're going to pull over our account manager number, last name, and first name from our account manager table. Okay, account manager number, last name, and first name. And then we're going to pull over account number and account name from the account table. All right, so working with both tables. I don't believe we have any criteria on this one. The big thing on this one is we're just trying to pull up a little bit of information from both tables. They do want us to sort, so we would like to place our account manager number in ascending order. And they're asking us to sort our account number in ascending order. Let's run that. Let's check our result. That should take us from Avondale Community Bank down to TAL Packaging Systems. You can check that on the bottom of page 91. We'll save it and that's number 12. We're back to design view. All right, now we are going to take a look at forcing a record. I don't know if you have been noticing that anytime we've been looking at all of our account managers, we have really just been pulling up three results. We've been pulling up account manager number 31, 35, and 58. But if you remember the other day when we typed up our table, we created that, we really had four records that we inserted and we're missing one of our workers and the deal is the person is a worker probably in training doesn't have any clients yet and that's why um, he or she is not appearing so they really work for us we would like them in our list so we're going to force a record so to force a record to appear this little line that connects both tables is very important you need to have that table or those tables connected on the same field. And we talk about that in chapter one. You've got to make sure that when you design your tables that you think about making at least one of those fields in common. And that's going to allow you to have a relationship and work with both tables at the same time. So our account manager number is that same field that we have in both tables. So if these were not connecting, you would want to go back to the design view of both of your tables and see why not. Usually it's a typo, but it could be that you set one up for a field size two and one of them you forgot to do that and you left it at 255. Or one of them you stuck in a caption and one of them you forgot to. So check that out, make sure that they're joining and then after you get those to join, you're able to work with both of those. But you're going to right click on this line that connects both tables and go into an area called Join Properties. Now, I'm going to have you scoot this over to the side for a minute. I can't just tell all of you, okay, go choose number option two. You've got to read the options. They're in different order depending on the order that you have your tables. You could have your two tables on your screen flip flopped. I have my account table on my left and my account manager table on the right. Now, the person we're missing happens to be an account manager, so I want to read my options. I want to make sure I look for the option that says include all records from the account manager table. That's what I'm looking for. So find that correct option over here. We'll OK it and run it. And that should force Peter Liu, account manager 42. He is now in our table. It is blank over here because he doesn't have any clients or customers yet, but at least he's in our list and we can tell that he works for us. So we would like to save as.
and that one is 13. And you can check the answer for that one if you want to flip in your book. It's on page 93. Now, while this is still on our screen, they want us to turn this into a report. So this is query view. If I print these right now, this is what it would look like if I would print. To turn this into a report, we'll just go up to create. We'll go over to the report wizard and it should be pulling up query 13 since it's on our screen. I want to move all of my fields over so I can use that double arrow in the middle. And we'll go next, we'll go next, we'll go next, we'll go next. And then to title it, if you flip over to page 94, you can see what your title looks like. They called it the account or the manager account report. And I want you to leave, uh, leave your name on there. And I'm going to have you go ahead and, and just put the number 14 on the end just so you know it's a 14th item. So uh, in a few minutes, we'll show you how to copy and paste all of these. But this is what it would look like. Manager account report, your name, and your number. And we'll hit finish. Remember that the wizard saves it automatically, so you can kind of see what that looks like here. And then if you scroll over in the navigation pane, it's saved automatically down here at the bottom. If you want to hit just a regular save, you can, but it's saved down here automatically. So it's easy to turn a query into a report. And you might turn it into a report because because a report, that format looks a little bit more polished and professional, maybe in appearance instead of the little queries that just look like a little table. Okay, we are going to go back to query 13. So if you want to just double click on query 13 and we'll go back to query design view. Let's take a look at setting up our next one. It's 15. It's over on page 102. So we go over a few pages here. Okay. So they want us to include account manager number, last name, first name, account number, account name, and then amount paid. So we're going to add another field called amount paid. And they want us to pull up those people that have paid us more than $20,000. So go to the criteria under amount paid. We're looking for greater than 20,000, keeping it very simple with no dollar signs, commas, or decimal places. And then let's run it and see how many clients meet that criteria. It should take us from Avondale Community Bank down to TAL Packaging. Always check your result. You can see immediately all of these are above 20,000. Remember that best fit idea. If your data is ever some of it cut off or you want to squeeze things together, you can double click on that grid line and best fit things if you need to. And we'll save this. Get rid of copy of. Go over to name this one. And remember, this one is 15. Number 14 was our report. So this is 15. And we'll click OK. And then we'll go back to design view. And then the next view that we're looking at deal with calculations. So they talk to you quite a bit about calculations in your textbook. We are going to work with a few fields here and then we're going to look for a field that currently is not on our screen or is not in our data. So let's take a minute and let's remove the account manager table. We're done with that. When you remove a table, it's going to remove any fields down below to go along with that. Let's go down and get rid of your greater than 20,000 also. So we would like our account number, we would like account name, we would like amount paid. Let's grab current due. And we would like total amount. So I look up here and I'm like, ooh, I do not have a field called total amount. But I would like to 
create a field called total amount. So to create a field that currently is not in your table, you can go to the lower design grid and you want to get to the next empty field just to the right of current due, sitting right here, see where I'm at. I'm going to right click and go into an area called zoom. If zoom is gray, I just want you to click on current due and then come back over again just to make sure that you're in the right area. So click off of it and come back. So we'll go to zoom. And whatever you type in first here becomes your new field name. So I want to call my new field total amount, I believe. Total amount. And then you have to follow it by a colon. And then we've used straight brackets earlier. We're going to use those straight brackets again. They're just to the right of the P on your keyboard. We're going to take amount paid, straight back bracket, plus straight bracket, current due. So I would like to create a query that will do some math for me. So this is the format. New field name, followed by a colon, straight brackets around the fields that you want to work with. The fields must be typed exactly how they are in the table. If I have a capital A and a capital P and amount paid, it needs to look identical here. So it is case sensitive. Current due with capital C, capital D looks good. All right, we are going to OK it and then we'll run it. And if you run it and it gives you an error message on your screen, go back and just check your formula. Make sure everything is spelled correctly. Make sure you have straight brackets in there. So what we've got going on is it's doing some math for me. It's adding amount paid plus current due. So I have a total here. I don't have to go to my calculator and recalculate calculate anything. I'm getting it to calculate right here inside of my database. And you can check your result on page 104. Avon Dale Community Bank should have a total of 2826750. That's how you can check and see if it's doing the math correctly for you. We'll save that. That is 16, I believe. We'll go back to design view. And then we are going to adjust our headings just a little bit. So you can see what this looks like on the bottom of page 105. They want this result to say paid and due. So we're going to open up our property sheet again. So I want you to click right on top of amount paid. And then open up your property sheet and go to caption. And I want to call it paid right here. Some students try to come down here and just type it in. It won't let you adjust that because it's looking exactly at your table. So you have to open up that property sheet. Let's click on top of the current due field and go to caption and we're typing in due and then we'll go over and hit run. So we have paid and due as our new captions. It's going to remember that so I need to adjust that if I don't want that to continue through the rest of my query. That is on 105 so we'll save as. That one is 17. All right, let's take those back real quick. Let's get rid of due and click on top of amount paid and get rid of paid. Now you can just close that property sheet if you would like. All right, we are going to clear out our design grid. And we're going to calculate some statistics. They would like us to pull up amount paid. And this is something managers would want to look at. I want to know on average how much I was paid. So we're going to do some statistics here. Let's look at your ribbon. There's a little tool on the right with a little sigma sign on it called totals. When we click on that, it adds a brand new row to your table called totals. 
Now get the drop down there and you can do all sorts of math here. I can sum this up. I can average it. I can find the minimum, the maximum. I can count all sorts of things. We're looking for the average here. So let's select average and let's run. And this will let you know if you have any typos in your database. And again, if you have typos, go over to your table and fix those. Check your average here. Are you getting 22,637.78? Hopefully. We'll save it. That is number 18. And we'll OK it. And we'll go back to design view. Now, they want us to find out the average amount paid for account manager 31. So I'm going to leave this alone. I want this result. I just want to add account manager number to my design grid. And I specifically want to pull up account manager 31. So I'll type in my data here. Now, I don't really need to see the 31 on my screen. So they have done a no show here. I just really want to see the average and we'll run it and we can check that on the bottom of page 107. Hopefully you're getting 18,511.68. We'll save it. That is number 19. And we'll okay it. And we got one more. So we'll go back to design view. Now, in this example, they want us to show all account manager numbers and all of their averages. So here I want to show it and turn that back on and I want to get rid of the 31. Now in the textbook, they flip flop this. I don't care the order of these. Let's run it. We want to see that 31 brought in 18,511.68. 35 brought in 28,24,50, and 58 brought in 28,577.16. So in the book, those are flip-flop that, that this is okay on order. If you wanted to adjust it, you could get rid of this first column and add amount paid here, and then average it. And remember, we just looked at average here, but there's minimum, maximum, and there's all sorts of those. So this is the exact look of the textbook. And then we'll save it. And that's number 20. And you have set up 20 different types of queries. The way you get better at this is practice. And you're going to practice these um, by working through numerous queries on your garden naturally database. If you can flip over to page 117 and take a look at that, you're going to open up that garden naturally database that you created from chapter one, and you're going to set up 10 queries for me. You're going to name and number each one of those. So if you would call those garden naturally, your name, and then query 01, 02, 03, there are 10 of those. If you would delete in your textbook directions 11 through 14, you do not have to do 11 through 14. No cross tab query. Stop at number 10. So 10 queries. And then for lab two, you are going to create queries for the museum gift shop. So open up that database and you are going to set up queries one through eight. Delete steps nine and 10. You're going to create one report for step 11. So go ahead and when you make that report, put a little 11 on top of it and your name. So I know that's item 11. And then you're going to have a few queries over on the next page on top of 120. You'll have query 12, 13, and 14. And you can just number those 12, 13, and 14 so they match along in the textbook. And then delete steps 15 and 16. Now, when you turn this into me, I'm going to have you turn it in in a little bit different format. Um, I have over 200 students that are working on these access projects, and it takes a long time to double click and open every one of these. So this is the procedure that I need you to use when you turn this into me. You're going to run your first query. So I'm going to have you double click it. You're going to come to the upper left hand corner and you're going to right click 
and you're going to copy it and you're going to go to Word, just a blank document, and you're going to paste it. And you'll just use the far left tool when you paste. I usually have you like enter between each of these so they don't run together. You'll go to the second one. So you can wait till the very end and copy and paste each one of those. There's not an easy way to select them all at one time and you want to make sure they're in order. So you're going to copy paste these in order, fit as many to a page as you can. And then you're going to submit your database as well as the Word document to me. But for grading purposes, it makes life a little bit easier if I can just um, grade the query result here. Now for your query result, either you got it right or it's not right. You don't get partial for half of, you know, maybe getting one part of it right. Either you pulled up the exact result that they're looking for or not. So take your time as you set those up, name and number each one of these. If your numbering is off, I will not have a clue you know what they are if they're not numbered i won't know what they are so make sure that they're labeled carefully and you copy and paste and that you submit your word document as well as your access document for credit so you'll be working on three databases running queries on those and then pasting those to three word documents so you'll set up and send me six things in your dropbox for this week and like always, if you have questions or concerns, stop by and ask me, call or email me, and I am happy to help you. That should get you through Access Chapter 2. And good luck as you set up queries.